Okay, so I, I dropped the ball there. I just did a long video and it wasn't recording. I'm back to my phone again. And, alright, so it's, it's kind of pain in the ass to go over again. Alright, so I did two other videos before I loaded up the first video today. And in that, I talked about sinkholes, or, or I was in my mind, I was talking about sinkholes showing the building is stable next door. And then, after looking at the images and all, I said, ah, this is the damn building that was next to the building that was imploded in 2018. So that I didn't post that. But I was going down that path of uh, the stability of the soil next to it. So I'm not discounting a um, sinkhole. Now, let me see if I can remember roughly what I just said in this video that I didn't record properly. Um, sinkholes. So imagine, a, a, well, first off, three columns and they're all you see one two three columns separate them and they're in line now imagine if I grab the center column and I, I take it out well now the span is between the outside columns that deck has to take that load of every deck above it too because it's loading on the column at the bottom into the foundation and when I say foundation we're talking skin friction the columns don't go down to bedrock they go to skin uh, the surface tension so now if I if I remove that center column that span is now from outer column to outer column that can cause some uh, stresses that will cause stresses in the, in that span and if they didn't calculate for that middle column being uh, removed then as a redundancy factor then you will get the deflection and you can get the collapse is what I was talking about we have the collapse high up so imagine let's call it seven floors so the seven floors will interact pretty damn good, like removing bricks. They'll hold up the seven floors together, let's call it. So let's go down at the uh, sinkhole. So, um, hole. Uh, you know how you go to rabbit hole? Sinkhole rabbit hole. So then we have the seven floors acting as a, um, uh, almost like a sheer, a giant shear panel or a giant um, truss plate. So it's able to hold itself together, and then it's trying to hold up the floors above it. You know, the other seven floors, let's call it and it can't ultimately it can't do it and it just it drops all together and then we can account for that top floor the top seven floors then dropping uh but collapsing where there where there's another question for me there because i have the it looks like the floors in that video only on cell phone i didn't look at it online here online to get a better look on, on the laptop but it looks like the top seven floors crumble if you will let's call it seven floors they crumble where the lower half drops so we have some some we have two interactions going on there we got we've got maybe the lower half separating and pulling on that because it's still connected by columns and it pulls on the upper upper floors but they they, they crumble whereas the lower floor appears to just drop the lower floors so now we have uh, Hey Danny, you sent me something. So then, uh, shout out to Danny. So uh, the um, the uh, so now let's go down a sinkhole. So a sinkhole usually wants to engulf other areas around it, and so we would see it go out to the street, the swimming pool, the structure to this left, the remaining structure. The thing is, though, with this sinkhole, if it worked, if the whole thing was a sinkhole, we'd have to have we'd undermine one column or or all of that section because all of that. Uh, building went inside the sinkhole. We would then stabilize the soil around it um, to help maintain that structure that the firemen, you see the firemen in with the giant balls. Um, you see that that would help stabilize it because the soil's there. Now if there was no soil there and it was just sinkhole, the building would, would be all the, the loads, a lot of the loads would be unsupported and you would get that rotation of the of the footers as I showed you guys with bricks where I stack brick on sand and then I remove part of the sand and you get the rotation well the sinkhole is the same concept of the structure the bricks would be the the column would be the building and you remove that section of sand you remove that section of sand and you get the uh, the uh, rotation of the of the uh, the building but we don't see that and it's possibly because if you know going down a sinkhole rabbit hole that that it's supported that it's supported now because of the building inside the sinkhole if you want to go down a sinkhole option now there and that's going to be easy to determine when they remove the debris we're going to see if it's a sinkhole or not so sinkhole is not for free not discounting it 
Now the 220 volt, um, DOS is saying on the screen here, 220 volt wiring running from each apartment. Um, uh, the, uh, it is possible that 220 creates an arc, uh, but that's, that's, those are some pretty bright arcs. Now using my photography thinking, that arc is pretty long. And the lens, the uh, camera would have to be pretty sensitive to catch that change of that light. The sensor would. So I don't know. That guy's got a good camera. Or girl, or the owner, whoever owns that camera, has got a good camera to catch that on the sensor. That fluctuation of that, uh, of that light in the distance, including the light on the building that's in the foreground. So that that's a pretty good camera on that one. We'll give it. We'll give that camera an A for catching the arcs. Now, with that said, it's simple as going onto the roof deck that's existing because those arcs appear to still be on that existing building as long as it's still there, it doesn't collapse. You should be able to find those arcs in the wiring. Or you'll simply find some, uh, you know, something nefarious. Otherwise, uh, going down the other rabbit hole, which is the uh, they loaded all those air conditionings in one, in one, u one section of roofing over there, which overloaded the, uh, the, the roof deck. And started the collapse on that side. Also, I think the person in the comments told me that they were um, doing a 40-year. I haven't, you know, I've been on, I'm on the road here, so I can't really make it to the laptop again. So the uh, there's a 40-year inspection going on there, survey. And also, they someone said, or maybe the same person said that they were redoing the roof. So they might have been stockpiling materials up there, which is just, you know, without without thinking and that's just without an engineer involved to transfer the loads to consider where the stockpiling is going interesting you would redo a roof though and also have the inspection going on because well I guess unless you wanted to see the roof but that would be pretty simple you think an engineer would say look you, you got all this stockpile of air conditioning units here each of them weighing say 500 pounds each and you're, you're putting thousands and thousands of pounds on this roof deck that possibly was not designed to hold all these AC units like that. What you do it is you put steel up there and then you transfer it down to the columns and then you put a steel deck on top of the steel. So it transfers to the columns, outer walls, inner walls, however you can, however the load calculations allow for, to allow you now to put the, uh, the air conditioning units on top of the steel. Of course you want to isolate the uh, AC units from vibration. You don't want a frequency up there vibrating like that. And getting in tune with each other uh, have you guys ever seen it those units um, theoretically will all get in tune a frequency with each other and and start vibrating it's uh, I forget what what it's called my brain can't really recall it but it's uh, it's it's just craziness how things will get if you put them together they will get in tune with each other if I put something out of sync to the left and, and it's out of sync to the right and I put them close enough where they can communicate with each other, the frequencies cross each other, they will ultimately, and it may take time, get on the same frequency. And the same thing with the, uh, with the, uh, um, um, those are the things that are moving, but with AC units, they're gonna be turning off and on, off and on. And so over years, uh, you know, I wonder how long it takes, because those things are running all the time, the AC units, you know, they, of course they shut down to some degree, but. It's Florida. So I wonder how long it takes, just, just thinking out the box here, how long will it take those units to get in frequency? You know, we are never going to figure that out. I mean, it's, it's gone. They're gone. The units are gone. But that would, that's very interesting. How many of them run in, or, or automatically synchronize in frequency? And what's the vi what was the vibration up there? Um, it, there's definitely some, but I, that's just something crazy to think about. But for something you guys to enjoy, go look up uh, um, synchronizing at a out of tune frequencies and you'll find you should find some videos on it where someone's showing two balls that somehow get in frequency with each other it's it's crazy it's really cute you uh you'll, you'll find it amazing all right so there was another one um the roof loading yeah the roof loading is a, is a big thing uh the 220 arc flashes of course we can figure that out just simply by looking at the wiring and also the uh if that's true and the um and remember, you, you, uh, Doss, you're saying 220 arc flashes. They were in a box. They get torn out of the box. They're being ripped apart. So you know they're in a they're in an enclosure. This 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 uh, the connection is, or it's being sheared across. But they still have the short 
out to get this arc. And that arc, they, they seem pretty convenient where these arcs are locating. And then again, I, I'm projecting convenience there. So that's my bias. I just don't like it until it's eliminated. you got to eliminate why those arcs. And, and they simply go onto the roof and look for it. Um, thanks, uh, Steve. And, uh, and uh, Gregory here says the rib slabs look like a rib block, ribbon block. Slab utilizing styrofoam void form formers. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't see that. Uh, Gregory saw it at the top. I did see. It might. I thought. I, I thought what I saw was some insulated board on that roof, Gregory. If you're talking about the roof, some uh, insulated board we do in the U.S. and then we put down roofing over top of it. So you put down this. You can slope the board. They come. You can get the manufacturer to give you a pitch to run to the to the drains. Of which, now, somebody wrote in here that the four, um, four, somebody was on the fourth floor and they had flooding. Well, there, there might be some standpipes there, some uh, for sprinkler systems that might have broken and did some serious flooding. So, I don't know what the uh, water, I don't think it's rain. The uh, floor, I know, I still get uh, um, some emergency warnings from, from uh, Louisiana, but this is not Louisiana, this is Miami. And it appears no rain was there, so I don't think we're going to say it's a. I don't think we're going to say it's some great flood from the roof. Um, there was no tornado or anything else like that, or a hurricane. All right. So, and the uh, condo unit, I think you should still consider. Well, all right. So then we're we're back to the. Uh, I'm not discounting a sinkhole, and I showed you how you can get to the sinkhole from there. Um, and how you can also keep the buildings intact from there. Um, you can also have, I think I said in the beginning of this, where there, or it might be the other video, where this, where you can uh, undermine, sinkhole can undermine one column, and that could cause your collapse. Uh, the material that's there, if you can imagine, the walls are blowing out and going in. I don't know what the, the walls are made of concrete and a lot of windows um, for, the, for the view. So, yeah, it... it does appear to be a lot of concrete but it appears to be counted for on the surface from the, from the picture I, sh I saw um, with my experience taking down a lot of buildings a lot of that building a lot of that building is accounted for above ground um, how much of it is below grade is the is uh, is interesting you guys are pretty smart can you determine if this had any sub basement it's right there on the water I'm guessing it did not have a sub basement that this is all above grade um, building because of you know you, you're flooding but then again Miami was attempting or did they get over did they put the subway in some craziness where Miami was attempting to put an underground subway in and they wound up above grade but did they ever get anything below grade on that all right uh, you can do it you know you can definitely do it uh, they did it in uh they do it in New York uh, 10, 10 Tampa Bay has a big picture view from a chopper. My sister lives across the bay. Uh, I'm reading comments. By the way, let me comment there. Uh, th this news lady saying she can see clothing and furniture from a block away. Okay. YouTube has eyewitnesses reports a series of bangs and it was her was heard. Well, that could be the floors collapsing. Um, all right. So I'm going to, um, DD is really in into this, um. I'm terminating video if I can. Let's see if I can do this. Where is the... Huh. Oh, this one. So this is what it looks like. It appears what it looks like beforehand. If you can see in the center, that's that would be where it broke free. That would be where it... Uh, the uh, the very center between the two buildings where what's left, if you can see it, that would be where your uh, sinkhole would have started um, if, it, if, if, if it is a sinkhole. Um, how do I get out of this? Uh, let's try this. And nope, I think there's a a bar. I should see. Huh. Let's see if it's over here. I'm looking for a bar. For this screen recorder, I've only used it um, just now. Bar. Um, well, I'll try this X. Uh, 